Good morning, Misfits. You are tuning into another episode of the Misfit Podcast. Full Goon Squad back in the house. Yo, yo, Hello, yo, gentlemen. yo, yo. What's yo. On? Welcome home. Hey, thanks. Hey, thanks. You've been away for a little while. I have. On this week's episode, we are going to be talking all things semifinals recap. We'll catch up with the Goon Squad. There's a lot going on with MisfitAthletics.com, TeamMisfit.com, and SharpenTheAxeCo.com. Hey. Um, so make sure you head there and use all your links and codes and all that good stuff. We're also brought to you by Proper Fuel. You can head to properfuel.co and use the code word MISFIT. So before we get started, Hunter, we got a little bit of a uh, kind of a freebie but like, I fucking dare you to try it situation going on with uh, Team Misfit Hell Week. You want to tell them about that? Yeah. Uh, starting, well, just for the week, Monday, June 24th, we got a our affiliate version of Hell Week. And we, uh, if you've listened to the podcast, you've heard us talk about Hell Week for our competitors, whether it's semifinals prep or games prep, uh, where we essentially beat the living Jesus out of those athletes. They have been built up to the point at which we can beat them up for a week pretty bad and then bring them back kind of down the other side to recover and make sure they're ready for the comp uh their competition affiliate hell week not quite as uh you know we're not necessarily progressing athletes up and with just the one kind of workout a day uh more than enough for you know for the general population uh we just have kind of your some of your benchmarks that you've heard of your helen your diane your franz uh, a couple of a couple of machine benchmarks, but we have uh, ratcheted the, ratcheted them up a little bit in difficulty. Um, Looks easy to me. And the ch- <laughs> yeah, they're they're pretty easy. Um, one of those kind of weeks where realistically, if you gave walk you know walked into that week <clears throat> and it was just a random week in May and you didn't have any context for it, the workouts would look a little spicy, and you know that's terrific, but. <laughs> our goal is to really try to it's more it's well the point That's is is that it's terrific. more about how athletes how athletes and coaches kind of present these workouts and then attack them and our goal is to get athletes really trying to push hard for five you know five days of some pretty rugged workouts it's like a rest um, week yeah, that's gonna. I'm gonna. I've, I have managed to plan. Well, the shucks, I'm on vacation the entire for time a, uh, for a, uh, a real solid on vacation deload week that week for sure. <laughs> that's what I'm gonna be doing. But you Maya's can. Uh, traveling you can, for work, so I'm. I'm obviously gonna be tied up with childcare. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, especially Friday. Um, but yeah, it should be. Uh, it should be a great time. Our we've had quite a few athletes at the gym already asking about it already. Uh, Sherb sent us a, was it you or was it Kyle who sent a screenshot of some, must've been Kyle. Kyle Sherb if it wasn't yeah. you. Yeah. A couple of athletes talking about it, seeing if they can survive the entire week. Not God likely. willing. We don't, we don't lose any affiliate athletes, but if he dies, <laughs> he dies. <laughs> we don't lose. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> we don't lose any, but every oh, time I great. think about it, I want to, what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to put up on the screen, um, just the clip of Lord Farquaad uh, from Shrek, where he just says, "Some of you may die, but it's a sacrifice <laughs> I am willing to pay. <laughs> sacrifice I'm, I'm willing, willing to, to take." Make. Yeah, that's a yeah. good one. Uh, but yeah, you can head to teammisfit.com. You enter your email address. If you're not a subscriber already, you can enter your email address and get the week for free. Um, and again, it goes Monday, June 24th through the Saturday, the 29th. Six days of good challenging programming uh if you're not a subscriber you can obviously plug that week in wherever works for your affiliate uh but we'd love to have you join and that is the week before the second summer phase begins so it kind of bridges the gap between the end of our summer phase one and the second summer phase if you're sick of no that, matter how put many... your affiliate through it make sure you tag us too yeah yeah for sure. <laughs> for sure let us know how it goes join the discord the discord chat is open to anybody it's not a not a private private group um that way we can answer any questions you guys have direct lines to the the people who wrote the wrote the workouts um but yeah it should be a good good week challenging week well good good variance and just uh good intensity throughout the week should be fun and then it happens every single year i don't know somehow hatchet off season one is 
seven weeks in reality, but in semifinals time, it's one week. Um, it just happens. You just snap your fingers and it's gone. So Monday, June 17th at misfitathletics.com is the beginning of hatchet off season two. Um, we'll get you guys a, a full podcast episode very soon about what that looks like, what you guys can expect from that. But, um, when, a big group of our athletes goes to semifinals. We always have that influx of people coming in and hatchet off season two is a really excellent place to start. So, um, make sure you head to misfitathletics.com, uh, and get signed up for hatchet off season two starting Monday, June 17th. And then last but not least for housekeeping, all the DMS about the blue misfit devil shirt, the gray misfit, we'll call it misfit King. I'll leave it at that shirt um, and the new suffer shirt are all going to be at sharpentheaxco.com on Wednesday, June 12th. If you've been around for our last few releases, we are still kicking it old school. There are still not very many of any of those shirts. So make sure that you are ready. And if you are in discord, Ted usually slides into discord with a private link for people who participate in the community, we want to make sure that the misfits that are following the program and always supporting the athletes so well get the first crack at these shirts. So sharpentheaxco.com Wednesday, June 12th, or keep your eyes on Discord earlier in the day for that. You can get a private link and get in there a little bit early. The first time I got to see those shirts was from Ryan's photos <laughs> from semifinals, like not on yeah. a screen. I've stared at them right. on a screen for hours and hours, yeah. but they look yeah. pretty fucking good. Yeah, they I haven't all seen them at all. Good. Yeah, Fuck. they look They're real nice. Dope. I mean, maybe you can have the mediums that I have for Ted to photograph. Um, maybe you can. Hunter's more of a know. small. That'd be too yeah. big. Yeah, we don't have Suck any excess. <laughs> fucking damn it. Call a space in that t-shirt. What's that, an extra small? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> all right. Life chat. I'm tired, so you guys go first. I moved. Yes, you I did. Helped, I helped Hunter move. Ted, 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 Shreb, Ted and Shreb help move. Shreb, Shreb looked like he was at mid fucking triple Fran, Bro. doing a <laughs> carrying no a table in that upstairs. hallway. So Ted, goddamn hot. Shreb, Shreb was the one like as moist as I've ever seen him. But yeah, we uh, oh god fucking damn it. So I'm moving Friday. I have to move, and I have to. My lease technically ends at noon because they have a cleaning crew coming at noon to do that which is great news because it meant that Did you get a late checkout for your lease <laughs> jesus the no fuck? Yeah, why is it so specific well, it, it was it, it was it was it was vague enough that i could have easily been like the lease doesn't say that it ends at noon it says it starts at noon it does not say it says it ends starts on may 31st so i could <laughs> what an absurd uh, uh, thing it was, for it to be that specific. yeah it was it was kind of absurd but i was like whatever honestly i'd rather get it get the move done on the first half of the day and now i have a technically a contractual reason to do so but obviously the night prior my car my car broke my car broke it just broke yeah it's the universe you're doing the fucking wheelies Murphy's the law. rear the rear shock absorber and like strut whatever i'm i'm not a car i'm not guy. surprised you drive like a fucking psycho i've been in the car with you before i don't fucking drive like <laughs> a, a race, psycho. Bro. no i drove over a pot <laughs> Jasmine is a fucking goddamn workhorse. Okay, she's a stallion. <laughs> but we hit a pothole. Jasmine's his car, not his girlfriend. Just for the record, <laughs> Jasmine's Jasmine a his stallion. girlfriend. He'd be a stallion too, bro. You don't know. Um, <laughs> she gives him piggyback she, rides. Everywhere. I hit a. I hit a. I hit a fucking pothole Put on, on just shoulder. one of the shitty roads near kind of the the mall and like the one fourteen area, and just her. It was just a loud like snap, like. I kept dry, like obviously kept driving because I couldn't just stop there. And I was kind of hoping that it was like a rock, like a, I don't know, a boulder, boulder. that fucking <laughs> kicked up underneath and was just like rattling around in the chassis and was going to kick out. I parked, look around the car and I'm like, there's nothing obvious. I was like, is there going to be a wheel fucking missing or something like that? And I finally <laughs> look, look under the wheel well on the rear passenger and whatever the yeah it's the rear shock absorber whatever it was was completely detached and i was like i don't know what that is but i'm pretty sure it's not supposed to look like that especially when the other side was actually attached so it's like 4 30 p.m the day before less than 12 hours before i have to or 12 hours before i have to start fucking moving and i was i was like this is good i actually laughed i just kind of like 
I looked like up at the sky and I just kind of like laughed. Like, Shook his fist. Fun. This is great. Just so. laugh so you don't cry. It, Sometimes it's so you. bad that it's not. It was so. Just, it, yeah, yeah, that's what it was. It was like this is this is this could not be more ridiculous. I mean, I guess can't it could. This is pretty ridiculous, <laughs> but I'm like, I can't even be <laughs> mad about this. And I somehow managed to like bring it in to get it over to a, a shop. And it was basically fixed while the move was occurring. So I, my my primary vehicle for the day was a U-Haul. But um, yeah, moved. <laughs> it was good. Spent the whole weekend getting getting the apartment squared away so that it wasn't doesn't look like a bomb went off in there. Um, and it's great. So Gabe carried the torch, by the way, for you, sure. He was always so sweaty in Knoxville. Oh boy, proud of him. Was it hot? He was so sweaty. Uh, not that bad. It's that beer like, gut he's got definitely now. Definitely hotter. That extra definitely. padding. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking cheeseburger locker on that guy. Paige, make sure, you, I know you listen to this. I'm sure Gabe tunes in occasionally. Make sure you tell him I said that. I'm going to lose that fucking dad bod of his. I'm well, the annoying thing, though, is he would still run circles around Yeah, us. I know. He's still that's gonna the be part still that's fitter. annoying. Cause he, yeah, he'd definitely run way faster than me still. <laughs> the day that I, I had to go home when they were in town uh, early on Mother's Day, and... Gabe did a aerobic piece with them and it was like run bike or something and he beat Paige which as you could probably tell from this weekend if you watch semifinals that's kind of quite a feat but he's carrying around a fucking he's hiding some jello in his shirt for sure <laughs> I'm gonna text him that he right tried now to, he what tried kind to of flavor jello you got hiding in your shirt Gabe? we did a three <laughs> rep max that. bench in the hotel um gym what do you hit 365 <laughs> So yeah, it was go. the it was the Smith machine, so it was really Fuck. hard to figure out how much weight to put on there. Um, and when he did a single uh, below my three rep max, he challenged me to max reps at one thirty. Of course he did. Well, tw- fucking twat. In my fucking. <laughs> Right, he he did thirty five and I just did thirty. Gabe's like, hear me so out. You guys, you guys know that. You guys know that fucking yeah. story. You go first. Thirty rep max thruster <laughs> yeah. in the Smith machine. It's like, all right, Gabe, shut the fuck um, up. Have fun. The fucking like the where my pecs attached to my breastplate was like uh, bad, real bad. Did Gabe have to <laughs> like put every your time I hung from the pull up bar? I thought I was gonna fucking die. And then he went back on his own because he was sore or something and used the Smith machine backwards. What's that mean? For squatting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was on the end. Um, so he was squatting with it, pushing him forward <laughs> instead of like sitting down into his squat. And he Sounds swears. Like a Gabe that squat. The, yeah, it's, he swears <laughs> that the balls. photo on the machine told him to do so. And he knew it was wrong. And then that's he flipped who, around in the other direction. Follow. You mean but like I his re- feet are life like core well told me where in to do front it. of the barbell? So it's almost yeah, like, like he, a wall sit type squat? Yeah, I mean, you when you yeah. look at it, you can tell based on the design how you're supposed to squat, right? Like you turn it forward to re-rack it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He oh, claims yeah. that it said he had to undo it like this and then squat where the bar went like this with him facing in this direction. <laughs> so he did a few squats that way and I think he hurt himself and then he spun back around and... <laughs> That, that all checks out. To 405. But yeah, no, Caroline kept asking why he was so fucking sweaty. And it's like, yeah, that's just, you'd see him coming Smith back machine. at a different time. Yeah, he's in that Smith machine. So he that held fluff. down the uh, sweaty guy thing. It was weird having it be a guy that was 5'3 um, instead of you, sure. But <laughs> <laughs> he held it down for sure. Proud of you, Gabe. Fuck. I'm upset about your fucking Smith machine squat, but good job. <laughs> <laughs> Sure, you have you sure. have you figured out the seasoning on your on your griddle yet? Yeah, I think for the most part I've got it figured out. I'm still kind of sure got a black stone. <clears throat> the um oh the top of the cooktop, like it's definitely more even than the fucking uh, propane grill I had before, but um still kind of getting the hang of it in terms of like using using the the griddle as opposed to like just fucking good old fashioned like propane uh, barbecue grill there, but. Um, I'm really liking the fact that I can just get everything done all at once. Like, I think that's uh, that the biggest biggest difference between that and like what I had before is like I'd have to go out there for like three heats. How many zones are on it? Four. I got the I think it's 36 inches wide. It was on sale in Walmart, so I picked it up because my grill was fucking like the grates on my grill. Like, if you put a piece of steak on it, it might just like potentially fall through it completely. <laughs> <laughs> so 
it was time for a new one. Yeah, no, I got it seasoned. Um, I'm just wondering, like, how much longer it's going to get to, like, I'm worried about the edges, you know what I mean? Like, you have to, like, when you get it seasoned at first, you stick the, the griddle seasoning and you go around the entire thing. Yeah. I'm just, like, wondering if I, like, I did that enough because I'm worried that I'm going to fucking ruin it because that's what I do with things, so... Making sure can't, you can't <laughs> sure you can't ruin those things, bro. But, uh, even if even if your seasoning's fucked up, you just sand just it off and do it again. It all. The what's, smash burgers on that the, thing is fucking ideal. Yeah. What's the pro? Is it just like seasoning a cast iron? Yeah. Just fucking yeah. Yeah. You get it, oil and you get just it blast it, ripping hot, and then you put a <laughs> layer of thin oil on it. You let it smoke off, and then you do it again. Let it smoke off. Do it again. Three or four I times. Did it like five times when I first started. And now they, I think the only thing I don't like about the Blackstone is the the fucking cleaning process is a little bit more involved. Like the the old grill is like, all right, well, I'm done. Sh -sh -sh Close it, put the cover on, go back inside the house. Now what it's are like, you, what are you, you doing for cleaning? Fucking process? water on it. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. So now I got like one of those fucking squeegee bottles. I do that. I I scrape it clean. Then I do paper towel, and then I gotta put the oil back on and heat it back up, and then I let it cool all the way back down. I put the cover on. It's just like a just a giant cast iron step. pan. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's dope. You don't, I mean, it's way better than what I had before. Way you don't better. really have to do the oil after every cook. Just you don't so think you so? Know. No. 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 Once in a while, it's good to do, but <clears throat> if the if the top's not looking dry, you should be all right. No, it doesn't look dry. No, all right. I'd say Turn hit it with the water, and scrape it off, dry it off. You're good. Got to get some of those like like fancier tools though. I really like the, the edges of the griddle get kind of gnarly. I don't know if yours the edges of your griddle is like gnarly. Fancier whatever, but tools. What the fuck are you talking about? I use I'm like a paint scraper and a yeah, bucket yeah. of water. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm gonna got what I need then. But I've been fucking like looking inspecting the edges of them. Like oh, I'm gonna fuck this up. I've had it for like two weeks already. Well, Can't good thing for you is me. they're they're pretty bulletproof. I don't think you could fuck it up that's, even if you tried. That's what I need. That's what I need. It is, yeah, no, it's great. It is, the cooktop is iron, right? It's steel. Yeah. It is like is it steel. Oh, it's steel. Steel. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. It's just heavy as fuck. The cooktop steel. is the so heavy to put on that fucking thing. The rest of it's fine. So is it a is it gas? Yeah, it's propane. Yeah. Propane. Okay. Yeah. No. You've got yeah, like four burners lined up underneath, and then you have just one big giant cooking surface. How fast do you blast your propane in yours, Ted? Not very. Not very. My, I, I, I only have I only have the twenty six inch or twenty eight inch, whatever it is. But mm. you know, I blasted through a, a tank, but I think it was half full, so I think that's what it was. It's like, God damn, I just got this thing. I've already blasted through this tank. Did you get one of those blue rhino tanks at the gas station? Those are yeah, always half full. Fuck. No, no. Go to Tractor <laughs> Supply Company. Have them fill up the tank for you. They'll, it's right. way better. I got one right on the street. I'll do that. I can do it. Apparently, the U-Haul station does propane Phillips too. That makes sense. Wondering. Yeah, that makes sense. Why? Wait, why? What? Uh, some of the propane in U-Haul. Some duh. of the bigger Piss jokes, like, units have <laughs> propane tanks on them for some reason. I don't know, like what it's. I don't know if it's like powering Noss. the lights or something. Noss. Full extra boost. <laughs> they got grills in them. Cooking. Yeah, you got Blackstones <laughs> in the back of your U-Haul. <laughs> Well, you stop on the I don't road. Think I, it's ever crossed my mind. I'm out of propane. Need to go to U-Haul. <laughs> no, I didn't either. It was breaks. on the door. I was like, "Why the fuck do you guys fill?" They obviously propane just tanks? have to have something powered by propane there. Yeah. And someone was like, "So, right, speaking of obscure sell, things at U-Haul, I uh, I bought a bike oh. to this gym to track down athletes when we're doing our running phase. So like they're doing like 800s or miles. And I can like ride behind them and like fucking scream at them. And I get this bike from Amazon with no instructions. Proceed to put it together poorly. The second I go to pedal it, I snap a pedal off the side because it was reverse threaded and it had no indication that it was right or left pedal. So I bring it over to Bruce's, this uh, guy that does all our air bike maintenance is at the gym. And I go there and I'm, you know, he's looking Actual at my bike and he's like, what the fuck? Quality. Who built this yeah, fucking hopefully. thing? And I was like, I built it. And he's like, all right, well, <laughs> I'll, I'll fix it for you. So he does this whole thing and he fixes the bike. And I'm like, all right, Bruce, like, what are my options for getting a, uh, a bike rack on this, my vehicle, my Volvo, whatever, hatchback? He goes, you got a couple different options. He goes, but we know what you but what you could do, the cheapest option is to go to a U-Haul place and have them weld a trailer hitch on your vehicle. Yeah. That's a thing. Yeah. U-Haul yeah. places will weld trailer mm -hmm. hitches on cars. Uh, I don't know. That's that where that's it, where but... com yeah, that's where companies will take their like vehicles to. And that's how you really? attach need a hitch. That's how you yeah. attach yeah, yeah. a trailer hitch to a frame as you weld it. Sure, well, I, I knew it was well. I just thought it was strange that it was at a U-Haul station. I was like, "What the fuck? That's where I would go." I think I could go to like yeah. an automotive shop. Were you talk? You were talking about a bike rack. Yeah, I know the one you have that like attaches from the, like the trunk. Yeah, like I could get a roof rack 
That's kind of expensive. He, had, he showed me an option there for a roof rack one. He's like, this is like 300 bones. You also look bones. like a dipshit with that yeah, fucking look. bike on top of your car like that. <laughs> hey, <laughs> I agree. I'm, I'm one of those dipshits. I got one of those roof racks for like 10 bucks on Amazon. You just take I'm the front tire it's off it, like hooks on, and I was going to say, I just bought that, the one that I have. Sure, I bought it on, I found it on Craigslist for super cheap. And yeah, it's pretty I gotta, good. I got to go but, find, I got to find something like that because I want to transport this bike around. But like, bro, your car is fucking big enough. Just put the seats down. Yeah, throw you it can in literally the back. put it's your the car in kids, the guys are pain in my ass. Well, don't put the kids in the car. Just put leave the them the with yeah, no Put well. the kids on the roof. Put the bike Ooh, in the trunk. Good call. Yeah. Ratchet strap, car blanket. seats on the roof. Yeah. Duct tape them in. So fun. I'd rather look at my car. Off, <laughs> off the top ropes. Yeah, you can see them both. Oh, yeah. One of them is definitely throwing the other one off the truck. I know which one it is. I just wanted this already. <laughs> yeah. Okay, gentlemen. I thought that was obscure, but I guess not. Fuck. <laughs> no, that's not weird. That's where you take your nope, truck that's to normal. get a trailer hitch. Yep. yep. Fuck me. Semifinals. <laughs> uh, I do want to shout out Syndicate Crown. That was one of the best run competitions that I've ever been to. In what way? It might have been the best. Just run organization and time and all that, or <laughs> everything. Yeah. Like. Like the warm up area was a little bit small, but the the event was scheduled in a way that it didn't really end up mattering too much. The final day with um, the three events and the men and the women switching back and forth, some of the machines were hard to get to, and we had to do the like fucking you go stand in front of the bike and I'll stand at the rings and you stand at the dumbbells for the primer to finish that. Um, but that section at the end where people would have seen us sitting um they also got a family pass for that so like mm. you could give out a pass and they were okay with with people switching them so like i could have given my coach's pass to someone at a different time um caroline and austin gave my parents their family pass but when Paige was out there my parents would give that family pass um to people from vertex or to, to one cool. of Paige's parents um so that section was was pretty great to have and you were like straight shot you were always able to get in and have like a like a through line to see the athlete and they could see you really well which was cool um and then not having the coaches in the media pit made it so that there were like it didn't even look like there was any media there they could move super freely they weren't like fighting over anything they could get to any vantage point that they wanted to um and yeah i was just super impressed with it it's it's more the lack of things going wrong than any one particular thing being perfect. But when you go to a competition and you leave and you're like, I can't complain about a single thing when you can normally complain about 15. Right. Um, I thought that was, that was pretty fucking cool. And then any of the stuff that seemed kind of dumb was actually uh, the CrossFit HQ staff and not like they go out there and they read the rule book for the briefing. You can barely hear the person He's literally reading the brief that was emailed and you got to sit for that like 30 minutes of them doing that. And it's just like, there isn't a single person here that's listened to a <laughs> word that you've had to say, like play it on a video on the jumbotron, like whatever. Like when so you want to shout them out. <laughs> yeah, for real. And then, um, that was probably the most competitive CrossFit competition I've ever been to in my life including the CrossFit games. And I understand that different regions with, you know, less population, different socioeconomic conditions send people to the CrossFit games. And, and that's why sometimes, you know, heat one or heat two isn't quite as competitive at the CrossFit games, but like the writing is on the wall for athletes moving forward. If you want to qualify in North America East and you're not a professional a true professional you won't go because we've had that conversation for years right about like can Vellner win the crossfit games because he snaps people's backs three times a week like these people that have the jobs or are like full-time like caretakers or something to that effect is it possible and i think certain athletes have defied that for the last four Except or five years yeah um holy shit watching Watching Heat 1 and Heat 4 look the same <laughs> on certain events was absolutely absurd to watch. I mean, it's amazing, and the sport is progressing at a rate that is like truly mind-blowing, but I, I, I think that that's the, the most competitive and impressive CrossFit competition I've ever been to. I mean, when you see athletes who qualified for the games a year before sitting in fucking 20th, 
like guys who are perennial games athletes and uh, yep are you know sitting in 20th or whatever it's like holy shit it's so weird I, it's so weird because i think i feel like this is the reason that crossfit has changed around the region thing so frequently is to try to redistribute the like the talent i guess or to try to make it so that this sort of region isn't you know i guess it is the exception not necessarily the rule but um yeah it's fucking nuts to just see like the number of athletes who have been at the games in with like within recent we're not talking like like ben smith like with respect like he's been around the game for a long time but like guys who have qualified and been high performers in the last few years like you know kind of the modern era of crossfit are still sitting in you know jake farlow one of the dudes who was like that dude fucking can clean and jerk six thousand pounds and his name crushed is jack. it last year <laughs> what did i say jack, it's jake. Like that's, that's <laughs> farlow not furlough Jack, <laughs> Jack Farlow, Jim okay, Fronglow, young <laughs> young kid, <laughs> and, uh, sitting in seventh, you know, finishing in seventeenth versus qualifying for the games just a year before. Do you think Spencer that has Pant- more to do with the field or the programming? Uh, I mean, if it were the programming, was, that would have catered to his. Yeah, he would have gone yeah, the other direction. He, it would have gone That's the a, other that way. That was a for big him. boy. That was a big boy program for sure. 100 strong boy program but but like uh, you just look at the leaderboard and adler did the row handstand walk workout in 740 and ben smith did it in 807 and came in 29th oh. um, <laughs> the the margin for error like having to do an extra set of toes to bar um having to shake your arms out more than once in the handstand walk event like similar row paces, similar transitions. You take fucking whatever it is, 20 points instead of 80. That is it's just so wild to watch. And yeah, because because of the like order of events too in the way that Sunday really like shook everything up, you would see someone in heat 1. Like there was there was a heat where Caroline came in 7th in heat 1 and she would have been 7th in heat 4 in an event <laughs> and it's just like like it's so crazy to watch and i don't know i just there are certain moments in the sport and it's kind of funny because this program was very classic crossfit there wasn't anything you know weird there was no like i couldn't figure out the ruck muscle ups or something like that i couldn't figure out the seated legless um just didn't exist within the event at all um so normally when that happens you would be able to guess who's going to go, right? Um, and for it to just be like a def- – to me, this was a defining moment in the progression of the sport of like how many people are so fucking insanely fit. Um, I Yeah, I was just – my mind was blown at how well every single athlete that I'm was just, I mean, I'm just looking at the gaps here, like someone who finished – Jason Hopper won that event 732 first place 752 so 753 20 seconds difference <laughs> is 18 spots yeah like some f1 yeah, numbers Seth, Seth Stovall I don't know who that is yeah it was basically it's fucking race cars going yeah. across the He's finish the dude line. who fucking hunted Austin down at the end of the at the end of the uh, legless workout uh he's uh, a mayhem, he dude was, he was yeah yeah he was way up Austin was way up, but Austin knows that he's got to use uh, some of the muscle hamster early. <laughs> <laughs> when are we going to talk about how fucking outrageous and insane Paige Semenza's performance was? Oh my god! Oh, well, I mean, I that's mean, yeah, that's Drew the... and I. I mean, we talked about that. We can save that for later. Like the no, we can. God we can jump into it. it. Get right into we it. can jump into it right now. Um, I think the probably the easiest segue is talking about how you have to be a professional um, in this region and then moving forward maybe in almost every region. And you wouldn't believe, you would not believe what she is able to execute on when it's not out on the competition floor. So I'm talking like warm up, cool down, nutrition, Uh, order of operations with things, athlete IQ with having a plan going into a workout 
and then having to adjust on the fly in a particular moment and remembering to come back off the floor and she would be like, I bombed that part of the workout. And it's like, well, you took seventh. So <laughs> fucking bombs away. <laughs> yeah, like, congratulations. Yeah. I cannot put into words like I, I want to like actually sit down and try to. I can't put into words how much of a pro she is and how she approaches things from every angle. Anything that she has control over um, going into these competitions and going into these moments, she takes full advantage of. And I'm talking everything. And I think there's something to that. It's the like, how you do anything is how you do everything. And of course, that's a very flawed statement. It's kind of silly to say, but there's a reason why we say it. There's a reason why people say it. Um, if you let one thing slip, there's a much greater likelihood that you're going to let more slip as the weekend goes on. And she just won't do it. And I joke, like one of the things that I'll do is if it's a shorter workout, the sweat check for most athletes will be four minutes, four minutes, four minutes instead of five, five, five. And she'll be like, yeah, I'm doing five, five, five. I'm not, I don't want, I don't want your uh, three minutes of, I don't need to do this. And then like everyone in the back is like celebrating their victories or you know, really emotional Distracted. about how an event didn't go very well. And she is immediately to the echo bike for 15 minutes after the event is over. And that includes <clears> if me <throat> and Gabe go over and we're talking to her about X, Y, and Z. And she's like, no, I'm not, I'm not leaving the bike. Like, and it's just, it's so incredible to watch. And she knows when an event is quote unquote damage control and exactly what she can do in the workout to mitigate that like as much as possible. And then knowing that like, Hey, you know, I went eighth, ninth, sixth to start. I gave everything I had in those three events and those little decisions that I make to keep myself in 26 in the row handstand workout versus 36 are the ones that got me so many points, um, to be able to have an event like that. So, um, like I said, I don't, I don't think I can accurately put out um, exactly what I'm trying to say right now about the way that she performs and the way that she prepares, but it is, it's damn near perfect. And it's so fucking cool to watch. I mean, the idea of being a professional too, we, you, you said that, use that, that word, use that term when we got started, as far as being a professional CrossFitter, I think people think about that maybe in terms of just the idea that I don't have my full-time job is exercise. And it's like, that's, that's such a small part of the equation. The maturity yeah. level that, that an athlete like Paige brings to that equation is what ties it all together. Like you have an immature or just a young inexperienced athlete who is, you know, able to be in the gym eight hours a day, whatever it is, uh, but doesn't have that, the one, the killer instinct to the competitive, the competitive drive, but three, just the general, like, I, I don't know what, what the, uh, another term would be other than just like general intelligence, like she Paige is an intelligent person. Um, and it's, uh, that's not to say that you like, <laughs> you, you know, your IQ is determinant of where you're going to be, but like, it's just, I mean, it's e just EQ helps is a lot. EQ. <laughs> yeah, sure. And her emotional intelligence, her just, I think just her maturity as an athlete and the ability to do what you said, where it's just like, Hey, understanding that there is a, you know, the damage control concept or just like the ability to adjust on the fly. Like we get at, you know, there, how many athletes are like, just fall apart completely when the first round plan doesn't go to doesn't go to plan or when they did the workout in you know in testing and they did you know their toes to bar unbroken for the first two rounds but then they had to break it up in competition and that completely sabotages the rest of the workout not you know being flexible enough to adjust on the fly while also being smart enough to to run you know your own race with regards to like what you're capable of, I, I mean, it's just, it's so fucking impressive to be at that level in that field. Like every single name that's above her within 20 points of her is just like, those are all like at least five of them are, are contenders for the, you know, fittest woman on earth. Fucking yeah, goddamn the, the fucking podium sitting up there. Yeah. The, the like, podium at this, both the men's and the women's was like, 
no one would say you're crazy if you said this could be the podium at the CrossFit Games. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. And within the point spread or the time spread that we were just talking about of like yeah. first to eighth being 15 seconds or 20 seconds, yeah. whatever it is. And I, something that I've done for, man, probably six or seven years now is when I'm at a competition, I try to evaluate body language of like all of the athletes. I want to see what the differences are because when we get into these competitions where aside from like Tia took 594 out of six, she, she got one can. of the geometry questions wrong on the SATs and oh, got fucking every, nerd. A third every and other four. <laughs> yeah. She's getting soft. They were talking right. about how that um, tied her lowest placing at a semifinals. Or I heard event. that too. That's so dumb. <laughs> <laughs> that's the, the funny thing is we can, why, why are we still talking about like Matt and rich? The greatest CrossFitter that has ever lived is Tia to me. It might be like, like hands that's, down. It is so dumb that she came back and did what she did in that way. But if we go down to two through whatever, um, evaluating body language is very, it's a very interesting thing, concept. And that to me is where, if we're talking about these 10 and 20 second gaps in 10 minute time domain workouts are deciding whether you're the best in the world or average, um, at the semifinals level is pretty crazy. So I'm trying to see what those intangibles look like. And, um, Paige had a, we'll, we'll have her on the podcast again soon. And we'll have a conversation about, you know, how she's doing with games prep and everything. And we'll recap a little bit, but I don't think she would mind me saying that this was a very challenging year for her personally. And, uh, it's one of those didn't seem like it's it darkest. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's it's one of those it's always darkest before the dawn type of situations. The version of Paige that that we saw this uh -oh. year that came Did up to guys? Maine roughly a month ago. The you're fine. All right. Um, <laughs> the like as a as an athlete, as a person, as a friend, as a coach, it's the best version of Paige Paige Semenza that I've ever seen. The amount of personal growth that she's had. Um, over the course of the year has been absolutely incredible. And lo and behold, that intangible that takes you from flirting with qualifying or not qualifying to being safe by 50 plus points was that body language. It was those, she carries herself in a way that like, dude, the final, like I don't know how much they put the camera on her in the Sir, final. a little bit. So Paige, is I believe 40 points safe, something like that. So like the person in 12th would need to come in first and she would need to come in 16th and that would drop her a spot. 18th, and then if actually, she you know, 18th like, or better. Yeah. yeah. So that is like, she's, she's in a pretty good spot in that situation. But still like if you go out and bomb that event, like someone dropped from 11th to 17th in that event. Um, so she does her bike, she does her muscle ups, um, and she picks up the dumbbells and she lunges a full section. And the lady says she's not standing all the way up in her lunges. She's not reaching hip extension. So Paige has to walk back to the start line and then lunge all the way down. Paige was the only person that I saw get penalized to not drop the dumbbells. Paige walks back like a fucking boss, like the fucking meme with the sunglasses slid across the screen in real life and went on her face. And I joked that she could have lunged back to Pennsylvania. She <laughs> literally turned around and just started lunging again and was really like accentuating how she was standing up, lunged the full distance all the way down. So if you guys look at her points right now, I think she would have been sixth or seventh in the final actually um, had she just lunge down make like every, basically everybody else they mentioned um, that on the broadcast they were like Paige semenza when there's lunging in the event is a top 10 athlete like <laughs> they were saying stupid everyone, shit like that all weekend yeah. on the broadcast. I, well i know they say stupid shit but like as soon as you got the dumbbells i'm like ah she's fine but ah, it fine. wasn't oh, yeah. <laughs> it's not just your work in the gym like there were athletes that you could tell were physically capable of finishing their lunges that did not because you could see it 40 feet in. You could see it on their face. You could see it in their shoulders. 
And Paige wasn't going to drop the dumbbells. Her body could have signaled to her, hey, we're going to go into fucking cardiac arrest if you don't put these fucking things down. Like, she wasn't going to drop them. And you could see it on her face. It was just like, this is my... This is my spot. This is my placing. This is where I belong. This is what I'm capable of. This is what I can do. And like just seeing her Terminator face for the last two sections was so awesome. Because like that's where for so many athletes, if the workout was 80 feet of lunges, they all would have passed 72 easily. But because it was 72 and you're taking those last lunges and you're in your head about, can I finish this? And if I step too far to get over the line for that last lunge where you're kind of deciding might have do one or two to finish because austin would have had one of the top 10 times in the world in that event had he not overstepped to try to get across the line um so i don't know just just that was to me the perfect period exclamation point whatever on the weekend of like i don't care that you called me back i'm fine i can lunge further I don't need your fucking help. Like any of that. It was so great. It was just like the perfect like visualization of what I'm talking about and the way that she came in mindset wise. It's, I mean, it's that killer instinct, right? She proves it to herself every day in the gym, whether she's training yep. with McKenna or not, what she's by herself, whatever. Right back, guys. She just has the confidence to know like I, I can make it across that line. No problem. And that belief, yeah, like there are a lot of athletes that could, and it's like the coulda, woulda, shoulda situation. It's the athlete. I mean, how many how many gym. athletes were in that situation where it's like I got my foot on the line, like I'm about you have one more lunge, and I'm not. That's not to discredit, like maybe every that heat was that I maybe, watched had somebody like that hunter. Yeah, maybe maybe every and maybe that person is lunged like. 10 steps farther than they did in training or that they ever thought they could before. And it was like, there's all, there's, but there is a line, the there's a line you for everyone, one right? Lunge. But there, but like where, <laughs> where it's like that really, that's the line, right? The last yeah. lunge of the last uh -huh. event of the last comp, you know, of the competition, you got to do one more, you're, you wobble on the tightrope and then put the dumbbells down. And it's like, God, good for her. I'm stoked for yeah. her. I was so, yeah. it was fucking cool to see that. And then you get stopped by the the coaches. Like, there's one element to it. I almost made a comment on Instagram the other day, but again, I don't. I'm very careful about what I say about an athlete's performance because the insinuation that we did it and she didn't is not something that I'm ever interested in doing. But I almost wanted to. She made that post about like if I did it for media attention, I would have quit. However many years ago, I almost wanted to be like. Gabe and I are in the fucking shadows with you. All three of us are in the shadows because like they make, you know, CrossFit Games makes posts, other media outlets make posts and it's photos of every coach from like HWPO proven like the bigger name stuff. <laughs> and yeah, and we're not involved in that. And there's a bit of a like you kind of wear it like a badge of honor because you get a lot of those same companies. We get a lot of compliments from them about the way we do things and about the way that Paige does things afterwards. They're just like, man, six fucking times. Like Impressive. this girl is qualified six times. And, and to think about all the different shit that she went through last year with her back and all of that, like not only did you need to get like 20% better just to, to hold your place, she got better than the field you know what I mean? Like if everyone rose up to this level, she went from here and went, no, I got to be here. Like I got to be up in this spot right here. So, um, yeah, Fuck I think man. we could probably talk Inflation about this. Inflation ain't got hours. shit on Semenza. <laughs> <laughs> no, for real. Fitness inflation. Staying ahead of that curve. Fitness inflation. Yeah. <laughs> <Semenza>. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. So it's definitely a shout out to all of the athletes, um, that were there. Like you were, you went through the fucking gauntlet. Like that was, that was the real deal. Um, I gotta say too, I th think bigger shout out to Paige. Yeah, not to to go too hard in a different direction, but the those fucking workouts sucked, huh? That was a fucking <laughs> kick I in like the programming. kick in the fitness. It was also weird though, with the schedule. The schedule was very weird. Yeah, they only did one on Friday, right? Yeah, like we were. It was Saturday afternoon, and they had done two events. It's just weird. It didn't feel the same as it mm. normally does. Um, 
And the funny thing too, is they like eased you into the weekend, like each day, like as a coach and you could tell as an athlete was just a little bit harder. 50 nice easy cleaning <laughs> jerks at 185. Yeah. Fuck. Good ease in. <laughs> um, yeah. If, if we, I mean, if we want to say, if we want to jump into talking a little bit about the programming, the only thing to me that was weird was the 4k run into 500 double unders into 70 box jump overs. That was a little bit like, huh? Like just the order and the way that they structured the days. I, I found that to be a little Shrubs weird. Achilles are turgid. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do that um, shit in one day, in one month. But in the same respect, they put them in all of the stuff that they put in like that, including the front squats, were in a dose that didn't feel like much in the moment. And I think accumulated to the point where Sunday was different depending on how you had prepared the entire year. Like, do you do your zone to work? Do you get in, you know, enough volume in your peaking phases, stuff like that? Because unfortunately for certain athletes, if you go and look um, in the, you know, maybe call it 13 through 25 or 30 range, some of them have a trend um, in terms of accumulating points as we get to a certain spot. Now, devil's advocate would be big, big, big power output. <laughs> like they went from like, how fit are you to, how tall are you on a rower? How strong are you on a barbell? And then can you hang on a longer bike and, and heavy dumbbells? So, um, you can kind of go back and forth on that, but you could tell athletes that, um, were struggling with, you know, sort of bringing it on day three <clears throat> because of the accumulation of the other days. Cause it didn't seem like much, like the athletes were not complaining about how they felt. But that doesn't mean that that level of intensity and doing 50 front squats at, you know, 225 and, and all that didn't accumulate and add up to make execution on Sunday kind of different. It's kind of what makes training for that so interesting because, like, we we talk about it at least more so at, like, the affiliate level and the concept that, you know, intensity is how you get better. And we even talk about it here when it's the open and you know, the open specifically where it's like, you need to go hard once a week, maybe twice a week if you're going to redo something, but you don't necessarily need a, a robust base of volume to handle that. When you go to quarterfinals, it's similar. It's like maybe you, you, there might be a situation where you do two workouts in a day or you're redoing something like that. But again, it's more about the intensity. And even with semifinals, like there's only six only six workouts spread out across three days, which for these athletes is pretty, is, you know, they, they're doing more than that pretty much year round. Um, but the intensity level is just so high that that level of intensity creates the level of fatigue where having had enough volume kind of under your belt is where that like yep. is where that comes from, right? It's like, it's not, I'm not doing a shitload of volume in preparation for this competition because the competition requires volume. It's because I need to be able to perform on Sunday. And the zone two work is obviously a huge part of that, but it's, but it's not all of it. And it is no. like, it is, it's volume and intensity for these athletes. It's like you start, you know, you start your competitive journey, like get used to going really fucking hard a couple times then gradually get used to going really fucking hard three or four times or two or you know two or three times in a day or you know 10 to 14 times a week and then like that that is what kind of builds the the a profound enough base of fitness to be able to compete all the way through sunday on a weekend like this where you know in a vacuum six events over three days is is below average volume for all of these athletes, but the intensity that it requires forces you to have to increase your training volume in order to be able to perform at a high level on Sunday. That's a weird kind of chicken or the egg sort of thing at this level. Yeah, for sure. How Drew, how did uh, McKenna hold up throughout the weekend? Last year in Orlando, after day one, she kind of looked like she got hit by a truck. She yeah. was like super, super beat beat down uh i was curious to know like how she held up throughout the weekend obviously she had yeah, some good so events but for sure i'll preface that by saying um 
we have a we've got a sort of in the new semifinals schedule you know coming back to the the castro era 2.0 we have back-to-back years of athletes following our hatchet program and qualifying for semifinals so mckenna did it in 2023 brandon true did it in 2024 and it's interesting because when we're approached by athletes whose super bowl is how high can i finish in quarterfinals peaking for quarterfinals with the new schedule with quarterfinals being in the middle of semifinals prep um if you're putting all of your eggs into that basket, I think it's fucking awesome that you do that and that you qualify because then you get the taste and you get to see the fitness level around you. And you're like, you know, a lot of athletes, if, if you can qualify for semifinals, you're one of the 280 fittest people on the entire fucking planet, which we'll throw that out there. Like, and if you're in this region, you're probably a lot higher than 280th. Um, so that's just, you know, go online and, and do a little math. Find out how many people there are on earth and then, you know, divide into 280 and be like, Oh, holy fuck. Okay. I'm cool. I'm fit. Even if, even if I got trounced at, at semifinals. So last year, McKenna peaked for quarterfinals and really got thrown to the wolves with, um, the programming in semifinals prep. And then Paige Semenza being the, um, waterline who did not peak for quarterfinals. Um, so last year she um she finished in 40th place last year uh at semifinals and her highest finish in a non weightlifting event was 36th place. Um and she came in 57th out of I believe 60 in the legless rope the seated legless workout. I believe she made That's it up and down once and then had to sit. Well, I haven't gotten there yet, sure. Um <laughs> In 2023, she had to sit on the ground. 57th place. That was cool to that watch. That was fun to watch. Yeah, sure. <laughs> no, no. Her event this year, you yeah. dickheads. Oh, God yeah. damn it, Sherb. This Stay year, with us, you big boy. I'm tracking. I'm tracking. <laughs> Sherb, you want a hot spot? You want like a T-Mobile hot spot over there? Um, I don't know what the fuck's going on over here. My, I got t- trillion dollar internet doesn't work. Yeah, that's the way she goes. Um, <clears throat> so that was her last year. She was very much like overwhelmed by the programming going into semifinals and then wow i'm actually here and one thing that was really cool is um i don't think brandon will be mad with with me saying this spoiler alert she saw herself in him in the early stages of the competition Mm, like pretty nervous pretty like holy shit here we are i mean talk about getting thrown to the fucking wolves Brandon's first week of semifinals prep was when they were in hell week. And I was like, I don't think this is going to be <laughs> welcome risen- to the Thunderdome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're going to die. You just gave everything you had to qualify. Now you jump in with into this other section. So anyways, when you, I think it's so cool that like, if you qualify, you're probably big fish in a small pond at your gym. Right. Like who you work out with. Sometimes you have a a, a situation where that's not the case, but it's very rare. So going out onto that competition floor and looking around and going, holy fuck, look at these people. Like I'm having a tough time tracking down the guy in 35th. So like I got to get my, you know, shit together next year. I got to come into it with a sort of a different approach, that kind of thing. So that was our goal. Um, McKenna really wanted to finish top 20. That's the goal that we set at the beginning of the season. Um, and there were, I want to say half of the events were, um, damage control for McKenna. Um, she ended up finishing in 23rd place, which again, talking about this competition and, you know, like Lydia Fish had, you know, 287 points up in 19th place. Um, and she was in contention for most of the weekend. So just talking about like what the competition level was like. And then one of the best moments of my entire coaching career, um, was her worst finish, uh, of the weekend, the probably maybe the biggest celebration of any athlete in the entire competition, 37th place in the, the legless rope climb workout. So, um, in testing, I believe in house, she finished four of seven rounds. Um, I had Paige take her through it again. Um, she got into the fifth round, 
um, in the in the legless rope climb workout. And before the event, I told her that she could finish it, and I upset her <laughs> to the point where Paige had to take her nice for a job, walk. Coach. <laughs> um, I did clarify. I said your your body can finish this workout. We got to get your mind to kind of come along, but. For for people out there, when when you do end up finally making it to semifinals, you can't treat damage control workouts the way that you do an online competition. An online competition with golf scoring, you have to go as full, strategize the shit out of it, damage control. Like you cannot take any extra seconds in in these types of workouts because they give you whatever a thousand points and you're done. Doesn't matter how you did in the other stuff. At semifinals, when you're down. 30th place, 35th, 40th place. There's no points down there. You have nothing to lose. So you finish the workout, you know, you can get out there and find that fucking dog. You finish the workout <laughs> or you fail a rope climb. Those are your choices. But you have absolutely positively nothing to lose <clears throat> when you're down there at the bottom. And I think there's freedom in that. And I really tried to to get that across to her. I, I think what's tough um, too, Drew, is the, the difference between expectation and like pumping the athlete up to be like i believe in you you can do this like sure. i think that it can yeah, yeah. be the double-edged sword because if you think that your coach has the expectation like hey you suck if you don't finish which is not what you're saying at all yeah is what is yeah. sometimes heard by the athlete where instead it's like i know you and i've seen what you can do in training i believe that you have the capability to do this workout what i'm trying to do is push that belief into you because if you don't believe it, it ain't right. gonna fucking happen doesn't matter how much right. i fucking believe it you gotta believe that and i think it's a a hard thing for an athlete to hear when it when they frame it as an expectation instead of like what's possible, and I think that's a hard line and something that does take time to develop with an athlete. That you know, when a coach does that, they're not setting an expectation where they're like, well, fuck, I'm gonna find a new athlete if this guy fucking can't finish this workout. That's not what's what being said at all. It's like, no, in fact, I believe in you, and this is this is me demonstrating that belief in you by saying I think you can do this. And I think that's the hard thing for athletes to hear sometimes. When they can't frame themselves correctly. Yeah. So so she came out right of the bathroom right before the corral time and the expectation was set. Are you going to try as hard as you possibly can? Number one. The answer was yes. And then are you going to be apprehensive out on the floor? Are you gonna have to at the end wonder if you could have climbed the rope again? And she was like, No, I'm I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna see how far that I can make it in this workout. So I sat next to her fiance with her split times up from the test. And it was, Wyatt, we're a minute ahead, dude. Uh, we're a minute 30 ahead to get into the <laughs> sixth round. She finished that bike in testing three minutes and 26 seconds after <laughs> this wow. moment right now. And it just kept building and, and the confidence built, right? So you'd think in a workout like that, like, oh, I can go get ahead. And then I would be saying the reverse thing. Like at the beginning, we're this far ahead, and then we're tracking ourselves backwards. She she continued to be like, I'm not the fast twitch athlete that climbs the rope like Paige, but I'm strong as fuck and fit as fuck, and takes me a little bit longer to get up that rope, but like, I can keep going hand over hand and go up there and slap the beam. And she started really whittling those, those um, rest periods down, like off the bike, chalk, up there. Um, I told her that she could walk um, the first part of the transition from the box back to the rope, but we needed a run into a big jump. You're a little bit of a taller athlete. Can we erase an entire rope climb or even two by how high you jump as you get into that? And, um, she did, she, she, she finished the workout well below the time cap, um, 39 seconds below the time cap. And, it's just one of those things we've been working so fucking hard on rope climbs and grip and all of that um, all year long. And for her to be able to do that um, and it was cool too, just because, you know, since she was, you know, sort of towards the back of the pack, um, all the cameras were on her and, you know, a lot of the people in the media pit Ted's been rubbing elbows with for years. So they had their cameras out and ready for the, for the person in the misfit shirt, um, sticking their cameras in their face. And I just, it was one of those things I was losing my fucking shit in the stands. Um, <laughs> you know, the other people that were there for her. And I think some people were confused. Um, 
because it was a 37th place finish, but it was the most like impactful single event start to finish of anything that happened there. And that's when you can truly say that, you know, the journey and the destination are, are, you know, it's a complicated relationship. Um, and that was very much a journey type of situation. That was a year long journey to get to that point. And man, I've, I don't know that I've ever celebrated that fucking hard. Um, and I definitely haven't, haven't for a 37th place finish, but it was fucking incredible that she went out there and, and finished yeah, I mean, that I, workout. I think it's the whole point of that, that story is like how many lessons were wrapped up for her in mm-hmm. a 37th place finish. Like, yeah. Yeah. Learn like the, the the chat before like try as hard as you can i don't have anything to lose okay i did this in training i got faster then i got faster then i got faster like just so many lessons for an athlete like that in that sort of thing that you have to have in order to you know next year it's 20 it's top 20 top 15 whatever whatever exactly. the goal happens to be and with fucking goddamn fitness inflation in the northeast <laughs> she's she probably took like eighth place worldwide and that workout you know aside from or you know b- below the all the other north america east women but i mean yeah, that wasn't really a legless cool rope climb her. workout for most of the athletes and that's crazy for the progression of the sport 13 yeah. legless mixed with pl- like a lot of biking like i don't anyone out there that has never done an echo bike rope climb workout go do it it sucks it's a long it's a long <laughs> your punch. arms yeah it's a long punch and your arms don't fucking work because you can't keep the wattage high enough on dangerous. the bike for seven rounds. Stick with to that. Yeah, that. I can't. I got to stick with this. <laughs> stick with yeah, that. Stick with my... <laughs> um, those. And yeah, you, you know, the other thing that's, that's sort of baked into that is you never want to be in a position where, like, I want the programming to be X. We want to get you to the point where the funny thing too is the athletes never get over it mentally. So they just say every workout is wheelhouse once they get fit. They're like, yeah, but that's wheelhouse for me. And it's like, well, fucking A, they did 19 movements and you're saying every single one of them is wheelhouse. Like, I think you might just be fit. That might be it. (laughs) And like going into this competition, you know, hey, Caroline, write down the worst thing that you could see. And she would write down 500 double unders and Hey McKenna, write down the worst thing you could see. And she'd probably write 13 legless rope climbs. Um, so those were things that, you know, going into it, you gotta, you gotta kind of prepare for, but man, that was fucking, that was something. And then I won't spend much time on it because I don't let the athletes spend time on it, but, uh, go to Hiller's Instagram and watch one of his recent videos for man. why McKenna didn't finish higher in the competition. Um, she probably would have cracked that top the, 20, uh, right? If, it, if that snatch. shit, if she didn't get those two no reps. Was it the same two. lane as Paige's lunges? Uh, no. 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 And I honestly don't know. I wasn't close enough to see whether Paige was standing up or not. Um, I mean, I have to ask her. She didn't really. She's honestly an, just a, another nod to her, not really the type of athlete who would come back and be like, that was bullshit. She might say um, it once, but then she would never say it yeah. again. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but yeah, the uh, the judging, um, the judging on the squat snatch workout across the board, same as it ever absolute, was, right? Is an absolute fucking joke, and you just hope, you know, Amanda Barnhart, three hundred forty two points, eleventh place, three hundred fifty five points. Yeah, that shit uh, sucks. She was in that video as well, so yeah. that that's when it's not okay. Yeah, you that's miss. when your fucking ego of like I come in 600th in every affiliate workout, so I need to go and you know exact my revenge on the fittest people that I've ever lived on the entire fucking planet. Be like, nah, lower, lower. It's a fucking snatch. I'm gonna get fired up. I can't. Do this. <laughs> you guys, you guys gotta, you guys gotta take the reins for a minute. I just, it's so fucking stupid. I don't know. It seems a lot like those the judges, the volunteer judges, <laughs> as the head judge is walking around, feel like. They need to impart their place on the workout. They feel like they need to have done something to justify their kneeling stance on the floor so they give out these random no Yeah, reps and when their fucking cheek is on the ground yeah. to look up at a... That doesn't make any fucking sense. Right. Why right. would your head need to be lower than the person's hip? If to they were like, below. That makes, yeah. yeah, that doesn't make any sense. What the fuck it are looks you cool. doing? <laughs> looks like you're involved. Yeah, looks so cool. The funny thing is people on that post were trying to dox the... Uh, 
I saw a lot that. of people were like, "What's his at? What's his at? What's his at?" Dex was trying to dog. Yeah, I saw who it was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was surprised by that. Guy's got no so friends. Dex. Take it easy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fuck. Fuck. They, were, they were fucking ru go read those comments they're fucking ruthless <laughs> they were deserved i mean <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah good stuff good stuff um so yeah it was a uh, all in all a, a very very good weekend great great weekend for mckenna i think you know she had she had two events where she was out there mixing it up with the kind of time that she would need so two out of six events to qualify for the games um and you know that in this region you're looking at if you want to be in the mix you got to be right around 14th 15th place on average i think it was 16th place got you into 15th place if that makes sense so if you average the points from 16th you would have been in 15th and if you look at uh 11 through 19 roughly we're in contention so i think that's the first moment where you realize as an athlete if you do finish now inside that top 20 in one of the regions where they take 10 or 11 you're basically a games athlete at that point you're right there and that's when you sort of find out whether you have what it takes in the preparation department and the mental department and the you know all of the ways that we just talked about you know page pre-workout post-workout that kind of thing um you know if your athlete iq is where it needs to be and you're fit enough to be in the top 20 i think you're fit enough to be in the top 11 so knocking on the door hunter sure. when you were in like peak regional shape like beating ben smith in that one hand sand walk workout <laughs> at one time <laughs> how, where do you think you would have placed given the events here if you were to have competed this weekend at your peak shape in the women's division or the men's well i mean you take it wherever you want men's uh, oh well. man fucking seven thousandth <laughs> whatever 41st and plop 40, you down on 40, the floor you're 41 41st a solid 41st i mean i don't Looking I'm at looking the at these I, events, I, yeah. I don't know if there's a workout that I could beat anyone the third the thirtieth place male in like Rohan uh, Sandwalk. Uh, no, run, you just got to hold the one thirty eight hundred. How run, hard is that? Run clean and jerk. I mean, no, run clean and jerk. That's too heavy. Front squat, get fucked. Uh, on <laughs> actually, there could there. No, that's too many. He's got the rope climb. Like it's only the first one. Rope climb, you it's only it would be, the first one. Yeah, it would be the the rope climb. Rope climb, echo no. bike. I wouldn't take dead last. You think True. I would take dead last? Uh, oh, let me look. Through. Thirty. <laughs> echo bike, legless rope climb, box jump over. That's. I mean, that's that's got to be my. That would be my best shot. Row handstand walk. Will Murad did withdraw. So technically, you could have come in fortieth <laughs> and not forty first. Yeah, uh, you could do. You I think you could do that workout in twelve fifty? The row handstand walk. No. The like seven us. rounds of because that's a that's an echo bike workout it was for every single male that was uh, out there i think that i could could you hold in the over the 400 watts the whole workout fuck i don't know man it's yeah like, exactly. yeah it was yeah I, like, well, I, uh, to be fair i said i i think i would come in i would be in 30th i didn't say i was gonna like do well i just so said 30th, I 30th 30th would have been 10 36 for that workout that's pretty fast. Yeah, I mean, it, I don't even think it, I it could was, do that. The squat so snatch, I wouldn't. <laughs> it squat was snatch, I couldn't watch. finish. The last one, no. I mean, I yeah, I would, <laughs> yeah. I would be. Yeah. It would be like, what if one of those workouts was started? If the, my placement started with a three, it'd be a win. Like <laughs> this, fuck. It's just too. Yeah, it's it's. I think this, that you could. I think passed. that you could come in like thirty six or thirty seventh in event one. I think you could probably run hard enough, or do you think those clean and jerks are too heavy? Uh, yeah, I was thinking that. I I think it's too many. I think it's just too many clean and jerks. It was just, <laughs> a shitload just, of clean and jerks. What was the weight? One eighty five. Gas me out. Yeah, yeah one eighty five. Yeah. That's pretty. Well, you got to do the just the power cleans today, Hunter. Shit's yeah, and I, I was pretty, running I was pretty fucking sad today too. <laughs> I couldn't imagine. I was gonna, the only yeah, months. the even the even the second one, the five rounds, the it's just I think the front squats would fuck me up too much. But double under toes to bar is typically not those are two of my better movements but again i don't think 50 like fronts, 50 squat cleans 50 squat 50, <laughs> 50 squat cleans holy shit many. you imagine how bad that Singles. workout would be Good that'd be awesome Lord. that'd be a great oh, workout my, yeah goodness sherb sherb would do sherb would do better than me for sure if at we were, what <laughs> these I events know, bro. i mean 
I'll bring it with Shrubwood. Shrubwood take walk. I'll do that one. That's about the only Sherwood one I would do. Shrubwood take 40, 40th, 41st, and three of the workouts, but he'd take like a 20th and a couple of those. Like One of them. A single workout. The uh, row handstand walk is the only one. Row handstand walk. You wouldn't. You, you'd probably be all right in the. Nah, no, you fucking lunge. No. You like a jamoke. No. I Austin. would not do well in the final. That's too hard. Austin squat came snatch? in Could you finish the squat snatch? in that workout, and he was in the low 140s. Probably couldn't finish That's easy. squat snatch. <laughs> You're fucking. Nope. Your Uh-oh. boob. Yeah. Handstand walk <laughs> row. Maybe. Yeah, the answer is no. <laughs> too many legless. Too many box jumps. There's way too many legless. I can't do that work. 475. Too many double unders. We should do a, we should do a Sherb v. Hunter simulation weekend this summer. I really no. want Hunter now to do the legless <laughs> workout. I need a 1036 time on a hunter. You don't have to move the box either. You just jump over the box. <laughs> he yeah, wants can I put to move all, the box. Can I put all my shit? Can I put all my shit next to you? Man, that would be Yeah, I could do three I don't know, rounds man. of that clean jerk workout I don't the time know, they finished. Man. <laughs> That's a hard workout. <laughs> I felt bad too. There were some athletes that did exactly what you think a an athlete that hadn't been there as much in event one for the run. Someone walked on round two. Oh, that's yeah, I was tough. there. I was walking around. It's called, <laughs> it was sure. yeah. it it's was called sure. pacing, Drew. Yeah, it's called pacing. Yeah, look at him. <laughs> I what, like would that. Would you say 1250 12. was the slowest time? Yeah, but you said 30th, which was 1036. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'd love to see that. What's a, what, so that's a, a minute and a half, minute and a half round for, for seven straight rounds. And the thing that was fucked up is the rounds weren't that much faster. What's thirty fifth? Give me thirty fifth. Thirty fifth. Thirty fifth. And event three, eleven fifty two. Also, oh, I get a whole extra minute and a half to spread 35th. out over those. I think you got rounds. it, bro. I, maybe yeah, maybe thirty fifth. Yeah, I'm just I'm looking here like Will Carter. Like we know Will, we've known him for a long time. Very fit athlete has been team a bunch. The only the only reason I say I might I might be able to do that is because you guys it's, are not cardio. Being that it's cardio <laughs> enough, but I don't. Yeah, no. Nah, I'm only trying I, the handstand walk. Rest of them fuck off. Rest of them too hard. I'd be you got a 72 up. foot section that you can walk on, Sherb? No, unfortunately, I do not. <laughs> the problem. Yeah. The problem Shucks, is it's only too. It's like <laughs> it used to be just like can you handstand walk reasonably well, and now it's like you gotta oh, run. Bro, fuck how you gotta run on your hands. You gotta run over an obstacle. You gotta run over a f- fucking telephone pole on your hands. <laughs> like what you do it on. That was my pole? favorite part of the complaints so in stupid. the back by the athletes. They want you to commiserate with them. Whatever part of the workout they don't like. <laughs> they say that the part that they liked should have been had more emphasis on it. <laughs> They're like, I wish this actually was a handstand walk workout. It's like, no, this is a fitness test that has handstand walking in it. <laughs> the things are supposed to come together to create something that's very challenging. Like, that's not a surprise. Same thing with the legless, which was actually a legless workout. It's like, yeah, everyone wants to watch you guys fucking half the field stand there and do nothing because you like to jump high and move your hands six it's times. Actually, <laughs> it's actually one of the reasons I, I think this is... I haven't looked at across the semifinals programming, but this has to be in the last five years, at least probably the best programmed. Uh, I understand the argument of like, this is for a lot of big athletes. I, I, maybe my, my critique is more that like, because everything is so it's, it's more watchable, it's more watchable and it's more easily understood what these guys are. Programming this year felt standardized. It felt like there was a response to the, criticism of like no one knows what your fucking sport is you're always doing weird shit like this exactly. year the That's quarterfinals the and semifinals was like we are going to change things but these are the movements that we do like these yeah. are our movements and it's That's, exactly very clear yep yeah. yeah. it's under that you can be in the stands and like i there's still a critique to be had about just like how the you know every year it's different every you know it, it's but it's more the fact that it's like this is very traditional CrossFit. There are no party tricks. There's no fucking like, I've never seen that before. It's like, here's all workouts that there's a reasonable chance that you could have even done in training, like five rounds for time, run 800, 10 clean and jerks. Like, like that's, that's a fucking Wednesday affiliate workout. If I've ever seen it, like what you day? can do that. 
Yeah. That was such okay. a beautiful workout too. Seeing the fittest men and women on earth mouth breathing and like bent over, like 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 shoulders rolled forward while they're running. Like, how long can you make these people be in zone five? That's what I. That's <laughs> it's like what twenty we, that's to twenty five minutes of see. zone five. I don't want to. It was see, so gnarly. I don't want to see the who can like who can figure out the fucking x equals of this workout like what's the what is the yeah. like you know i'm 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 so smart that i can game around this and i can figure out what the equalizer is in this workout it's like there were no equalizers in the workout the, the equalizer was how Fitness. fit you are and <laughs> it's like it's like every single thing that was asked of them is reasonable to have asked of them in training even at like even at lower levels of competition a lot of these things are reasonable some of the volumes a little high but um for like if you if it were like a quarterfinals workout for example but it's all just like it's all right in front of you it's all things that you've done it's all things that you've prepared for all year there's no fucking party tricks there's no monkey bars there's no fucking pullovers with a legless rope climb where you got to touch your toe to the beam and but there was still gamesmanship which was head. so cool there was yeah, so much gamesmanship like, in that workout like each heat had groups of athletes you know, you had your front pack leaders, you had the people behind behind mm. them. And like in the top heat in heat two of both the men's and the women's, you saw that crafty veteran run at the back of pack two mm. and then end up taking fourth or fifth place in the event. It's like you guys are deciding exactly how hard I have to run. Yep. And I know that if I stay behind you and kind of draft off you, I don't need to do the fluctuations. I don't need to go up and down. Like they had to run up this fucking super steep grade loading dock right after the clean and jerks. So there was a lot to like you get the clean and jerks done and you have to get your ass up that thing before you kind of get that. What you would normally get is like I can get my heart rate back down on the run, which is absurd to say. But compared to clean and jerks, that's that's what it is. That's where you have Sorcery. to get Sorcery something back together so it was cool to see the gamesmanship of like i don't even need to decide what the pace of this workout is you decided for me i'm gonna stick with you and then because i don't have to do mental gymnastics this entire workout i'm gonna just fucking bide my time and i'm gonna run past you at the end and clean and jerk and win by two seconds yeah and there's no weird movement where it's like where the fuck did this guy come from like how did that person sneak ahead uh -huh. of me like why is that no name take a second place finish in this the circus act workout it's like nope yeah it's cool to see you go down to the bottom of the leaderboard of and there are no finishes even in the teens 40th 38th 28th 29th 22nd 29th 23rd like it's very rare like of course the clean the uh, snatch workout you've got like one person towards the bottom that did well but you go up to the top surprise surprise fourth third second first like yeah. in that event and so, yeah, I, I agree. Really cool test of fitness. Um, and I think the season just has had that vibe to it from open to quarterfinals to semifinals. And I think that it would be cool if that continued at the CrossFit Games. Like you can have your you can have your elimination tournament of triple backflips, you know, whatever into pencil dive, whatever you got to do. Um, pencil dive. But I don't think that's going to dominate the programming, especially considering it's going to have to look more like semifinals with it being mostly indoors. Indoors, yeah. yeah. Fortunately, the game that doesn't, but I do think it seems like Castro is like, yeah, this is what we're going to fucking do. And to be honest, that's even that's better. That makes it that makes it more exciting. It he doesn't need to the write the programming to though to say mm, we're not doing that. <laughs> You know, sure. Like he can be like, be as creative as you want within the confines of, you know, we go long, medium and short. We run, we row, we bike, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. So, yeah, totally agree. All right. We're going to have one of the most abrupt endings in the history of the Misfit podcast. <laughs> because poop. We have a, yeah, I have to poop. <laughs> Sorry. Just go I always have um, to poop. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Just thank you for tuning into another episode of the Misfit <laughs> Podcast, and thank you to our show sponsors, SharpenTheAxeCo.com, Wednesday, June 12th, for the new t-shirt drop, TeamMisfit.com. Make sure you go put your email address in so you can get your downloadable Hell Week for free. 
uh, misfitathletics.com Monday, June 17th for Hatchet Off Season 2. Um, we're going to continue on with you being able to decide if you want to follow the strength bias track or the conditioning bias track to get yourself ready for Phase 1 when all the games athletes and semifinals athletes rejoin the crew. Properfuel.co. Use the code word MISFIT. And we'll see you next week. Bye.